Humans have gotten pretty good at living on Earth. You could go outside right now, in whatever you're wearing, and be just fine, probably. Even with the sun shining down on you at noon on a summer day, a little sunscreen, all long sleeves and a wide-brimmed hat will go a long way to protect you from radiation. So, you'd think astronauts in space would be protected by those bulky spacesuits and hardy ships, right? Actually, no. But what if we could make humans better at living in space? This is Salt Pepper Wisdom, the ultimate destination for seekers of wisdom and lovers of cool facts. Today we're going on a journey full of science and speculation to see how we might make humans better at living in space. The radiation we're talking about takes the form of subatomic particles hurtling through space at high speeds. Some of it comes from our sun, but it also comes from sources outside of our solar system in the form of cosmic rays. When those particles reach us, they can kill cells and tear through our DNA. That's not a figure of speech, those particles can physically break apart the base pairs that make up our DNA. Dead cells can be a problem, leading to things like heart disease and cognitive decline. Sometimes those cells can be repaired or replaced by the body. But damage to our DNA can hinder that repair work and cause mutations in new cells. Those mutations can lead to cancer or the development of heritable diseases. The more radiation we're exposed to and the more damage is done to our DNA, the higher the risk of cancer. That's why using sun protection is so important. Fortunately, for those of us on Earth, our planet's atmosphere and magnetic fields shield us from the majority of the radiation, 99.9% .9 of it. The average dose of radiation we get per day measures only 10 microsieverts, or one one hundred thousandth of one sievert. But in space, on the Moon and on Mars, there's little to nothing between us and the cosmic rays. Data from the Mars rover, Curiosity, suggests that an astronaut would receive about 0.66 sieverts of radiation on a short Earth-Mars round trip. That's roughly the same as getting a full-body CT scan every five or six days. Our cells and our DNA would be under constant attack, and we would have nowhere to hide. So, what if we could condition our human bodies to withstand the hardships of space travel? Before we answer that question, we at Salt Pepper Wisdom want to say thank you for watching. If you learned something new today, hit the like button and subscribe for more frequent fun facts. First, we can look to the space survival expert, our good friend, the Tardigrade. If you haven't met them yet, check out our Tardigrade video. The link is in the description. The thing about Tardigrades is that they have unique physiological traits that allow them to survive some of the harshest conditions imaginable. Tardigrades are able to protect the cells of their bodies from harm, including damage caused by radiation. Scientists have already sent Tardigrades into the vacuum of space and retrieved surviving specimens. As we learn more about the Tardigrades' physiology, we may find ways to borrow their superpowers. Researchers are already exploring the possibility of combining the DNA of tardigrades with human cells to make people more resilient against radiation. One key to understanding how tardigrades and other hardy species do the things they do is to isolate the genes unique to them. George Church is a Harvard geneticist and a leading synthetic biologist. He has identified over 70 genes that may help humans fight disease, decrease pain, and better tolerate long-term space travel. One gene, called CTNNB1, specifically contributes to radiation resistance, while another, called DSUP, helps tardigrades suppress damage to their DNA. Other genes help the body resist bone loss, like SOST, or make bones stronger, like LRP5. A few genes, like EPAS1, help organisms to live in higher altitudes with less oxygen. Radiation isn't the only part of space travel that's hard on the body. Living in isolation and in zero gravity for long periods of time takes a physical and mental toll on astronauts. With a wide variety of useful genes to work with, we could help future space travelers protect their health from several different angles. Cool idea, right? So how do we get there? We are still several years away from editing genes in human beings. Scientists are observing the effects of these genes in mice. Pharmaceutical companies hope to use this research to help humans resist cancer and fight the effects of aging on the body and mind. If gene therapy as a treatment is already in the works, then gene therapy as preventative medicine may be close behind. Astronauts could use these genes to start fortifying their bodies for space travel long before they ever leave the ground. Let's take this idea a few steps further. If we want to start living on other planets full time, we could consider creating an entirely new kind of human. Geneticist Chris Mason has proposed a 500-year plan to create humans that are better suited to colonize space. There are three main components of this plan. 
First, we need to identify which human genes we need to leave alone because they are necessary for our survival. Second, we need to engineer new microbes. What are the microbes for? Check out our video about the human microbiome. Finally, we need to learn which genes to add, delete, or modify to create permanent changes that can be inherited by the entire population of new humans. Centuries from now, there may be people who can go outside on Mars in whatever clothes they're wearing and be perfectly fine, probably. There are still many, many unanswered questions baked into this line of thinking. Developing the technology and understanding the science are only half the battle. There are ethical concerns involved in genetic engineering, especially once you make the leap from lab mice to human test subjects. There are philosophical questions about what makes a human a human. There are social questions that would arise if we create a second kind of human. It's impossible for us in the present to know the answers, or even all of the questions that we'll come across as we head further into space. It's going to take time, cooperation, collaboration, and open minds to carry us to the stars. Hey, thanks again for tuning in to Salt Pepper Wisdom. Leave us a like and comment below to tell us what you think future humans will be like. We hope you'll subscribe and hit that bell button so our next exciting video finds you as soon as it lands. Your support means the world to us, and it helps us to continue creating quality content for you. Goodbye for now, and love to all the Earthlings. Spread kindness, spread wisdom, and be safe.